Your oncologist has asked that a port placement be done in order to facilitate uh, ongoing treatments into your veins. This is a, a matter of convenience, but it's also a matter of safety. Uh, back in the ancient days when I did my training, these things didn't exist. And people getting chemotherapy and antibiotic therapy would just literally run out of veins. Uh, they would uh, just have the worst time and we would have to do cut downs on their veins and arteries and stuff. And uh, these have greatly made things um, more convenient, but also safer. Those little spindly veins that we put veins that, that we put those things into would break. The chemotherapy would infiltrate, and they would end up with major skin loss and big pain problems and stuff. The port placement is a matter of putting. The, the chemotherapy into a large vein this big around uh, where it's immediately diluted, immediately pumped out through the rest of the body uh, and delivered where it needs to go with minimal impact on the small veins in your, in your arms and legs. So our port placement uh, can greatly facilitate your care. Uh, a port is something that is uh, placed under your skin, usually below your collarbone, on your chest, above the breast. Uh, the incision is usually an inch, inch and a half long, uh, and it buries itself underneath the skin. It's something that you can feel, you can see it as a bump if you're a skinny person. Um, and it's something that they can poke a needle into and access your veins, draw your blood less reliably than giving you things. But it can really take a lot of pressure off your other veins and give you an area that has relatively low sensitivity to needles being poked and uh, facilitate your care from a standpoint of blood draws, giving you medications, and just making things easier because you can take a shower over it the next day and not worry about it. So port placement is usually done as an outpatient surgery where you come in, have your surgery and go home the same day, usually sedated under a light general anesthetic because we're dealing with some big blood vessels and we don't want you wiggling while we're there. Uh, you're generally at Meridian Surgery Center for four hours or so, an hour getting an IV started. Uh, talking with the anesthesia provider, uh, getting changed, getting in the operating room, an hour in the operating room, and an hour or so recovery time before you're on your way back home. But you should be up and around the house the night of surgery, up and around the yard the next day, using your arms as long as you're not doing repetitive sawing or boxing practice or anything like that. Uh, it should be reasonably comfortable and you should be reasonable fun reasonably functional. The port sometimes is used the next day or the day it's placed. Other times it's a couple of weeks before it's used. Um, when the port is in, it will always need to be flushed with some heparin solution to keep it from clotting off because it's inside one of your major blood vessels and uh, blood gets back into it and it needs to be flushed. Everybody who deals with ports is aware of that and will be paying attention to detail to keep it from getting infected, keep it from getting clotted. We used to leave these things in indefinitely. The record I'm aware of of one of the, these ports that I've put in was 12 years it was in. But eventually they either get clotted or infected or break. Uh, and anymore, the FDA has approved them for five years of use. So if you're uh, dealing with things still five years from now, sometimes we have to take it out and put another one in. The operation uh, is not considered major surgery, uh, but it is done in the operating room setting because of sterility. It's a foreign material that's being put in. Uh, it needs to go in sterily and needs to heal sterily so that everything will go without it becoming infected. When we're putting a port in, uh, it's usually going into the vein below your collarbone. So on your left side, your collarbone's a big bone, and this is a big vein coming from your arm that goes under the collarbone, makes the turn, and goes down into your, your heart down below here. Um, so our goal is to hit this vein with a trajectory that allows the uh, uh, catheter to go down into there. Uh, and it's a pretty slick arrangement that they, that they worked out many years ago where we actually use a needle to go in. Then uh, we place a flexible wire in the course where we want it to go. We check the position with an x-ray during that to make sure that it's not 
going up into the neck or crossing to the other side, but going down towards the heart. And then we feed the catheter directly over that so that you have catheter inside the main blood vein coming outside of the vein here and buried under the skin there through an incision about that big. Uh, so this is the port and this is the vessel this is the vessel that goes into and that's the catheter I hope you are uh, too critical on my art. So the complications associated with putting this in relate directly to the anatomy. This is a large vein. It is right next to a large artery. Um, and if in the process of injuring either one of those, you can get into major bleeding. I've had one patient in 25 years that's needed a blood transfusion with this procedure. So that's very uncommon. But this just happens to be the location in the body that has the highest mortality rate from a stab wound because these are big blood vessels, they're behind a collarbone and you can't get to them. So luckily that is a very rare occurrence. I've never had a patient die with this, uh, but um, it is inherently an issue and we try and keep the needles and wires as small as we can. Once we get it in place, then with time, this can clot off internally, so we have to use the heparin solution to keep it from getting clotted off after use. But additionally, the blood flow that's coming from your arm through here can form an eddy down here and form a big blood clot in the major vein to your arm. And after a port's placed, if three months or two years later, suddenly you've got a really swollen arm that isn't particularly hurting, but it's all swollen, it's because a blood clot has formed around the catheter. And that needs to be treated with blood thinners. Sometimes we have to take the catheter out. Uh, but it is, it, it is a problem where the blood clot can break off and get into your circulation and cause lung problems. That's an infrequent problem, but something that needs to be watched out for. So that's what you watch out for is the swollen arm. If you get the swollen arm, call your oncologist. They'll know what to do. They deal with blood thinning all the time. The catheter is going to be accessed with this port area here. Needles going in and out. If you're getting a lot of chemotherapy, you're going to have a lot of needles accessing. And your immune system will be down because of the chemotherapy. So once this is in, it can get infected. If it gets infected before any healing has occurred, it will need to be taken out right away and the rate of infection needing immediate removal is about 1%. Uh, and I think it's lower than that at Meridian Surgery Center, but we got to quote some rate, so we're going to say it's about 1%. So if it's red and angry and you're having fevers within a week of surgery, we need to know about it. That needs to come out. The more common rate of infection occurs through the years, and this is about 5% per year. Uh, and once it's all healed in, if the needle injects some sort of germs and they get embedded in it, then it will cause chronic infection and it will uh, cause some fevers. And half the time antibiotics will cure that, half the time antibiotics won't, and it needs to come out. Uh, sometimes something else is causing an infection and they think the port might be it and we have to take the port out to find out if it is the source of an infection. So it, because it's an artificial device, can cause some sort of creation in that way. And it's always a consideration, somebody who's had chemotherapy that's getting a fever, is the port infected? Uncommonly it is. One of the things that can happen and you need to be aware of within 24 hours of the operation though, is that in the process of putting a needle into this vein here, if the needle goes beyond the vein, the thing that sits right underneath there is the lung. And uh, in the last 10 years, I've had one patient with this. I'd say, uh, they, they say the rate of this is about 3%. But if the, there is a uh, needle poked into the lung, it slowly leaks air. It might leak it massively, and you might need to have a tube put into the chest uh, right then and there. I've never had to do that. Uh, but in my experience, the more common scenario is that the lung slowly leaks and everything seems fine and the patient goes home and they're up and around but when they lay down to go to bed the night of surgery 
or the next night after that, suddenly they find that they can't breathe. If that's the case, that does take a trip to the emergency room, a chest x-ray, and frequently they'll put a small tube in there to drain out uh, a little bit of air, get the lung fully expanded so it seals. Uh, that's called a pneumothorax. It's manifested by shortness of breath within 24 to 48 hours, usually when you lay down. Uh, so uh, that's one thing to watch out for. And then this is an artificial device. The whole thing is. It's all getting scribbly here. Uh, but right under the collarbone here, the collarbone bumps against it all the time. And the catheter can break there. If the catheter breaks and they inject some chemotherapy, there'll be a sudden severe pain right under the collarbone area where the chemotherapy is getting outside of the vein. They need to stop the infusion immediately if that happens. The longer it's in, the greater the chance that it's going to get occluded down here. They can dissolve that by injecting blood thinners through there, but sometimes it just gets too gummed up and they can't. As soon as this is either broken or not functioning, then it needs to be taken out with a second operation. That's usually done under a local anesthetic, just reopening this incision. It all pulls back out of there. I've had three patients in 25 years where it's broken here, uh, and we've had to do some special things to get the rest of that catheter out of there. So that's a, uh, a rare circumstance, but certainly uh, something that needs to be thought of in an artificial device. The process of the port placement is uh, an important one for convenience in your daily care, uh, but also a safety issue. Um, now you know the things to be watching out for. We can get this taken care of for you, uh, and uh, you can start concentrating on the important things uh, with your oncologist.